This is a story about immunotoxicology, the field of immunity as it relates to the exposure to toxic substances, and my extraordinary luck in meeting one of the developers of this field, Dr. Vera Stegshall, in 1994. I had the privilege of being invited to Sweden to give a presentation and was introduced to Dr. Stegshall, who at the time was the head of the Immunological Laboratory and Immunotoxicology for the well-known and highly valued Astra Pharmaceutical Company in Sweden, later to become AstraZeneca. Dr. Stegshall had developed an extraordinary technology for evaluating the influence of various substances on immunological function by lymphocyte testing, later to be called the MELISA test. And I had the privilege of having long discussions with Dr. Stegshall about this technology and how it could be used to assess low-level toxins and the effect that it had on our immune system. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Stegshall passed away last year. She had an incredible years of contribution to the field and I want to take a moment just to review what she left us with, with the concept of the MELISA test, the test of her development. But to properly understand how she developed this test is to really understand her unique contributions to the field through her work at Ostra. She was an immunologist by training uh, from the Czech Republic, and then uh, relocated to Sweden, uh, where she was at the university and studying immunological function, developing new, new assay methods, and was then hired on at Astra to uh, be an immunologist, uh, having to confront then early on one of the significant issues of challenge for the drug company that was developing at the first uh, time a antacid material that was called Prolisec, many of you are familiar with this, omeprazole, that would be the first uh, drug, an H2 blocking drug, that would be an antacid to treat uh, esophageal reflux and acid reflux conditions. This drug was to become later a uh, several billion dollar a year uh, revenue generator for the drug company, making it an internationally famous drug company. So it's on a one single technology and discovery that this company vaunted itself forward internationally. But they were, you know, came to a very big crossroads in the uh, approval of this drug in the United States because of a toxic effect they had in one of their preclinical studies in dogs. And the drug was going to be held up for approval in the United States, which would basically have killed it in their financial planning and modeling, uh, knowing that this was going to be the major market for the drug. They called on Dr. Stegshall to find out if she could identify why this drug had been toxic in this animal model that had prevented its approval and put her immune knowledge of toxicology to work to develop then an application for a test that she had been working on for some time, this lymphocyte stimulation test, later to be called the MELISA test under her registered name, to evaluate then how this uh, drug could have produced this problem of necrotizing intracolitis in the dogs. In examining this, she, through her detective work, found out that uh, it only was occurring in a certain species of dog, and it only occurred in dogs that had been in that species pre-treated with an anti-worming medicine. And it was the interaction of the anti-worming medicine with that specific genotype of that dog that produced that toxic effect when administered the drug omeprazole. She later showed that if dogs were not uh, worm infested and had not been pretreated with anti-worming medication, that they were completely tolerant to the drug omeprazole and there was no toxic effect. And in fact, that work ultimately, when presented to the uh, US FDA, led to the approval of drug and ultimately billions of dollars of revenue to the company. The company was so excited about that that they awarded Dr. Stegshall with a laboratory of her own and uh, an annual award where she could do any kind of research that she wanted. She made the decision that uh, she was going to pursue then this toxicological uh, assay looking at low-level toxins in the environment, particularly metals, because she was of the belief that these so-called inert metals, palladium, platinum, nickel, 
things that were being used in uh, implant uh, materials in surgeries were not as benign as they had been thought to be. And maybe in some individuals, based upon their genotype and their immunological uniqueness, could produce immunotoxicology or toxic effects. And so she put her new test to work in trying to study individual uniqueness in response to metals, only to open up the field of metal toxicology that had never been a field prior to her contributions. And in fact, if we go back to look at some of her early publications, we find that this kind of uh, detective uh, story that she was developing around toxicology was really built around some fundamental understanding of the cytotoxic effects and lymphocytes of various foreign substances. And in fact, I went back to 1973. In one of her first publications, Cytotoxic Effects of Activated Lymphocytes and Their Supernatants, showing, in fact, that um, the white cells could be used as markers, uh, both ex vivo and in vivo, for evaluating toxicology at very low levels of, uh, of activity or response, or meaning very high levels of uh, sensitivity. In fact, uh, there are some uh, 50 or more publications that Dr. Stegshaw uh, developed over the next years to come around this technology, ultimately with a more recent uh, publication on the identification of metal sensitization in sarcoid-like metal-exposed patients by her MELISA lymphocyte proliferation assay showing that these, quote, inert metals were not as inert as had been previously believed. And in fact, in some individuals, at part per billion levels could produce immunological effects. It was the birthing of this particular discipline of metal toxicology that ultimately gave rise to a whole foundation that has now been formed. Um, uh, the Council for Nutrition and Environmental Medicine has this uh, sub-chapter uh, looking at metal toxicology. This is all a legacy to the contributions that were made by Dr. Stegshaw over her years of service. And it's still interesting to me that today we are not yet completely understanding in medicine uh, the contributions that she's made through these multiple studies in multiple animal and human uh, intervention trials, looking at low level metal toxicology and the effect on immune function. So, this is a moment to shout out to Dr. Stegshaw. I had the privilege of uh, talking with her at length, uh, getting to know her, and having uh, dinners uh, to discuss science with her over the years. Uh, remarkable personality, a tough spirit, a, a person that was not easy to give up and continue to forge forward in her ideas that really has created a whole new discipline in immunology, the metal toxicology, immunotoxicology discipline. And I think today we need to be very mindful of this work as it relates to certain conditions of neurological uh, or immunological origin that are related to this low-level personalized uh, adverse response to uh, metals, not just mercury, but palladium, platinum, nickel, uh, elements that were previously thought to be uh, completely inert, uh, that in individual cases of sensitivity could produce immunological defects in indicating uh, things like autoimmune disease. Thank you, Dr. Stegshaw, for all your incredible contributions. We'll miss you.